Hey, Jesse, how are you today? I am good. I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> Fine. Thank you. Well, I got to say, it was tremendous watching you play this season. I came from a similar background where I didn't grow up in the greatest of places, and I pulled myself up through education and everything. What did it mean to you, first of all, to share that story with so many people? Uh, it was incredible, honestly. That was, uh, you know, part of the part of the reason I went out there was, you know, I to have this sort of platform um, to potentially reach people who, you know, kids, young people who are in situations where they feel like the next step is, you know, similar to me when I was at that age, the yeah. next step was going to be prison. Um, and so I just wanted to like show people that like, it's never too late to change. It's never too late to, you know, turn things around. Yeah. And so it's incredible to have that sort of platform to be able to share that story. Now I was really surprised and, you know, I keep my finger on the pulse of, you know, various social media and, and online and stuff. And you even made a comment. You said like, what's all this hate about? I didn't understand it either. It's one thing to be sitting at home watching it. It's far another thing to be on the show. Cause you guys aren't, I think sometimes people forget you're not characters, you're real people. How have you dealt with all of this that's come towards you in, in this regard? Yeah. So I'll say that like 95% of the messages I get, <laughs> are very positive, <laughs> very positive. Uh, but there is a five percent where they really dig in and they're just throwing out my background as negativity. Uh -huh. and like that. Um, all I do, and what I've learned is that if you send them a heart emoji, uh, <laughs> they they immediately turn around and they're like, "Oh my god, uh, I was just having a bad day and I didn't like what you did, but I love you." So <laughs> that's been my strategy. So. <laughs> Now, looking back at your game, I mean, you played, I, again, I've been watch, covering this from the very beginning. I've watched every single season. I even watched UK and I watch Australia as well. You played one of the best games in the history of Survivor, to be honest with you. Um, is there anything looking back that you wish or anything that you did that you regret? I, I don't think there's anything that I regret, honestly. Um, I played it. My, my, my game plan was, you know what, if I magically make it to final three, like yeah. if I can make it through fire, if I can make it through final <laughs> four, um, immunity, um, I, I don't want there to be any questions asked that I played the best game. I, I wanted it to be a short final tribal council. Yeah. That's my goal. And so I played that way and uh, I don't have any regrets. I mean, if anything, the only thing I'm looking back on and thinking is like, God, I wish I would have taken out Gabler soon. <laughs> Dang, I, he clotheslined me. I think I think everybody <laughs> feels the same way. <laughs> now, now we had, you know, I spoke to Cody about, you know, you made the big move against him. Uh, looking back, how do you see it? How are you two guys now that the game is over and you've been able to decompress and all that kind of stuff? Uh, he choke slammed me as soon as he saw me after uh, I got. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. Um, you know, as as soon as I saw him, he gave me a hug, gave me a handshake. Um, I think uh, what what he's told me is that as soon as I pulled out Janine's idol, it's all sort of made sense for him. Right. Um, the what, what he said, his words are just like, I'm just glad that you didn't take me out sooner. I'm glad that I got to have as much of the experience as I did. Uh, so. <laughs> so we're good, and uh, you know I love Cody. We're, we're, we're I, he's a lifelong friend. At this yeah. point. Now, what I've heard from others um, is that you know, as far as the jury was concerned, they were pulling for you, and when you arrived at Ponderosa, a lot oh, of that, wow. a lot of their plans, a lot of their thoughts, you know, went away. So that must have made you feel really proud of your game because knowing that it was respected. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it's so bittersweet, honestly, the whole that, that that's how I'll, how I'll describe my journey and my survivor experience. Is it's so bittersweet. It's, it's right. been incredible to watch my game back because you're out there. You're thinking like, I think I'm playing like a really good game. Yeah. Um, but you don't know for sure. And then to watch it back and see it and you're just like, oh, my God, like I was playing a good game. But I also know how it ended. Right. Like I knew yeah. how I knew where I was headed. Um, and you know, I've talked to the jury and whew, I, I might have swept it. And it's hard to hear, but it's, uh, you know, it's also amazing to hear. So. Right. Well, the thing, the thing, again, I watch survivors from all different countries, Australia, New Zealand. I, I've watched them all. 
And the, the thing that disappoints me about this version is the fire making at the end. I want to get your opinion because, again, it, it hurts your game. It ended your game. How do you feel about that being part of the final and not, you know, that taking away from somebody being able to speak to the jury? Do you think you would have been actually also, do you actually think you would have been cut even though there was a fire making challenge? Yeah. So I, I don't know. I'm not as hard on the fire making challenge as other people are. Right. I, I think that it does give like people like me another opportunity to make it through. True. Um, right. Right. Like, Cause you, you don't have a fun, like the, they don't have a final say and like, you're out like it's it's on me right to try and make it to the end true yeah fire um but i and this is again like this is me like looking back on the whole experience and just like running it through my head a million times um if there was no fire making challenge um i mean there's a potential i i had a really good relationship with gabler and he's told me that like, like if he would have won final immunity he would have pushed me through the end and potentially wow. gone to fire against owen right um, so I think that like, you know, if there was no fire making challenge, I could have maybe got Gabler to help help me vote Cass and maybe I would have ended up in fire in a tie, yeah. you know, tie scenario against Cass. Um, but you know, that that's all what ifs, that's all like right. scenarios. At the end of the day, the the fire making challenge gave me one last shot to make it to the final three and I just I didn't pull through, I didn't stick the landing, and that's all me. So <laughs> well, it it, it, it it kind of goes along with the rest of your challenges during this season. Hey, no. <laughs> you, you, you could have you could have buy a win. I mean, is it, you're looking back, was it just the challenges? Was it just was there anything in particular that just threw you for a loop, or it was it just your luck? I, I'm just I, I think at this point I'm just gonna say I'm allergic to challenges. Anything, <laughs> anything with the word challenge in it, I'm allergic to. So please, yeah, no. It, that, I think that's something that I might have said to Cass even on the island, like yeah. when, we, when I was pitching my uh, please go to fire against me idea. Uh, I think I might have said something along the lines of like, I'm allergic to challenges. Like, <laughs> probably beat me. <laughs> so. right. Now, where I come from, okay, if somebody gives you something and there's a chance that they're not going to get it back, it ain't stealing. How do you look at the, you know there's a lot there's a lot of criticism a lot of talk about the idols and all that kind of stuff. Tell give us a sense of your mindset and how you approach those decisions those moral dilemmas. I mean at the end of the day like as real as the relationships are in the game as real as like these you know these people are out there right because it's yeah. not I'm not watching on TV like I'm yeah. out making these relationships I'm building these relationships with people. Yeah. Um, the relationships I have back home mattered more, right? right? Like the promises that I made to my wife, the promises that I made to my kids mattered more. And so I was willing to do anything it took out there. Um, and you know what? If that means I had to steal an idol, I had to steal an idol. So. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm on your side. I mean, again, I would approach the game as like, hey, I'm, it's great to bonus to be friends with you, but I have obligation to people back home and there are you know they're my life and i so i recognize and, and really sympathize with your decision one more final question jesse and i ask this to everybody i've talked to on survivor i mean obviously we only get to see so much on the show um because it's edited down but you guys are you know filmed 24 hours a day is there anything about your journey whether it be a moment a move Anything that you would have wished viewers would have saw about your journey to better understand it, or maybe just to appreciate it a bit more? Yeah, I mean, that that's sort of a hard question because I feel like my journey was like a lot of it was shown. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I have no complaints about you know the amount of uh, time that I was on uh, on TV. So, <laughs> yeah. um, but I will say that I think that one thing that sort of got um, you know left out to to an extent right. is. Uh, my relationship with Carla, okay. uh, you know, I mean, as much as I was trying to trip her up out there and make her, you know, <laughs> <laughs> make her fall a little bit, uh, you know, I loved Carla and uh, yeah. we connected on a real personal level just because of our backgrounds and where we yeah. grew up. And um, we ended up at this, we, we were at Berkeley at the same time. So yeah. I think there was just a lot of like conversations that I had with Carla that like, I think, I, I wish it would have been our, our relationship would have been shown a little bit more, but yeah, you know, I can't I have no complaints. 
Right. Well, just so you know, she said the same thing about you and about your experience. So it, it, that she, you know, that was a nice to hear from her as well. But once again, Jesse, thanks for again for taking the time to speak with us. I hope your survivor journey isn't over yet. I hope we get to see you again in some capacity. And again, I've been covering this from you know the very first season, and you played a masterful game. And no matter how it turned out, I think you should be really proud of the game you played and the moves you made and the whole mindset was just fantastic i appreciate it thank you thank you uh next time i play i'll be on the heroes tribe just <laughs> we, you never know <laughs> hey, well, I'm saying, well, <laughs> anyway, take care jesse have a great day and the best of the holidays to you uh, thank you thank you as well